they're 98 on room air. They're doing great. And you're sitting here charting. And the pulse ox starts alarming. And it says 88 on room air. Well, what the heck? And the kid is symptomatic. <sighs> I can't breathe. Last. Oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. Now you got some work to do. But if it drops just suddenly like that, it's usually a mucus flood. Because the phlegm will start building up in the, bre in the breathing tube and building up until finally it occludes that bronchi. And when it does, and now we're not talking about in the trach tube, I'm talking about when the bigger bronchi. And when it does finally occlude that tube, it blocks off that whole branch. And when it does, that whole branch is not working. It's not exchanging oxygen or gases. And they, their sats drop right away. And they feel it. They know what's happening. Okay. Now, at that point, what you have to do, your job is to get it out. You need to pop that thing out of there. And the, just the way we're going to do it, this whole process is a, a generic way to describe it. It's called an aggressive pulmonary toilet. That means you're going to get it out. You're not sure exactly how, but we're going to follow some, some steps, and we're going to go from the least invasive to more invasive, and we're going to get it out. One of these is going to work, and usually with the kids, it'll happen real quick. First of all, now, okay, first of all, 88's not real bad. They're not in real bad distress. If it's dropped all the way to 78 or 72, we're going to bypass a couple of these steps and go straight for the ambu bag. Yeah, start giving them breaths because we don't have time to waste. And it'll start giving them air, start pulling some of the phlegm out. And um, But if it's just dropped down to 88, they're in distress, first give them the PRN oxygen. That's not going to cure it, but it is going to relieve their stress a little bit while we, while we fix it. Then um, ask them to cough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, they probably can't cough for you. Okay, but ask you, so just in case, if they can. <laughs> no, big cough. <laughs> okay, if they can't cough it up for you, then we're going to make them cough. And the way we're going to make them cough is with, usually with saline. But with a kid, it's going to be a very, very small amount of saline. And it's going to be very rare. It, with usually about two drops of saline. And the only times we're going to use it are to stimulate a cough and to loosen their secretions. We shouldn't have to loosen their secretions because they should be constantly be really thin from whatever aerosol or the heater that we're giving them. And um, so, if, but if we do have to stimulate their cough, two drops, <laughs> whatever they cough up, cleared out. Now that probably won't get it all. Now, also, if they if they have a plug, that portion that is plugged off, and you listen to it, it'll be hollow and it'll be it should be absent. There should be no breath sounds at all. That can be very difficult to hear with a kid because they have even if you have a small stethoscope, you may hear two or three segments, so you may not be able to pinpoint it. When you do listen, they should sound clear because every time they get some phlegm you make them cough it out but if they are just very congested this will work too even even if they don't have a plug but are just very congested you can use the same process okay if they haven't coughed it up the next thing we're going to generally do is gently hyperinflate them with an amber bag now When, when you take a breath, your bronchioles dilate and open up. The air goes in, and then when you breathe out, they constrict and it pulls any phlegm with it. And so if you have a patient who's sick in the hospital, you generally have to go in and make them t turn, cough, and deep breathe every two hours. That's because they're sitting there, they're sick, they're not moving anywhere, they're breathing shallow. And that phlegm is building up. And they're prone to get it. And there's a lot of germs in the hospital. They're prone to get a pneumonia. So we want them to, to take a deep breath, cough, open it up, and pull it out. 
and that's going to get rid of that phlegm. We can do the same thing here. Even if we hear some rattles on this side, we could turn this side up so it's dra the gravity's pulling it. And even if we just give them some extra breaths with the manual breath button. Breath. 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 It'll pull it out. And that's on the first page of your uh, nurse's notes, there's a little check mark for PD, the postural drainage. And that's an easy way to pull it out. Same as when you talk about turn them on the side and it just drains out in the oral suction. But if it's something a little bit worse, like a mucus plug, we're going to gradually give them a, a little bit bigger breath over about three to seven breaths. I'm not going to be very aggressive with this. I don't want to come on here and go, come on, you can do it, come on. Okay. <laughs> now, an infant typically gets about 30 to 50 cc's, or that's how much air their lungs can hold. That's about a mouthful. That's about that much with a sandwich bag. And we, we have a lot of patients that are not typical size. But... So, and I'm going to breathe fast, so I'm going to put a little pressure on here, and when I feel them breathe in, a little bit bigger, pull it out, clear out what's come up, do it about three to seven more times. And especially if you have a plug, you want to really dilate those breathing tubes and get some air back behind it. And once you do, then when they breathe out, it'll pop it out. And the best time to do it is right now because this is barely closed up and that's the easiest time. If you don't get it out, it'll keep on building up and building up until you have a pneumonia. Now, a plug with an infant may look like that, a little white chunk that or a little green or a little yellow chunk like that in a bunch of thin secretions with a four-year-old it may be about that big around it's not going to be a big green dime like with an adult which is great to get out <laughs> but it usually happens really easily but even if they're just very congested and you're having to suction them all the time every couple minutes this will clear them all out at once but even if by chance you haven't gotten that, that plug out, it'll still get the rest of that phlegm and clear, greatly decrease the working breathing. When you have gotten them that plug out, their sats will be back up at room air at 98 or wherever it started. If it doesn't go back there, you haven't fixed the problem. But after you do this, if it's, they're going to be in better shape, but they may not be fixed. So if they're not fixed, start with the PRN stuff. You will have a bronchodilator, and you will have a PRN bronchodilator. Give it. And if you have CTT ordered, go ahead and do that too. If you have a vest, even better. It just shakes them real good. It'll probably shake it loose. If you have an IPV machine order, that is the sole purpose of that machine is to prevent and break up mucus plugs. And you give it with a bronchodilator. So give them that treatment. It will break it out. Matter of fact, try to do it right away. And it does the same thing we're doing with the Ambivac. It just does it rapid fire and with the breathing treatment. That will clear them out. But if they cannot cough or don't have a cough reflex, they don't have the ability to use their muscles or don't have a cough reflex, that's something totally different. It's one thing not being able to take a breath in. You can give a breath with a ventilator. If you cannot cough, there's no way to get that breath out. or no way to cough the phlegm out. That's when they'll usually have a cough assist machine on it. It does three things. It gives a big deep breath, but instead of letting you breathe out naturally, it turns to, suck, to vacuum and sucks the air out. And then it pauses and then it does it again. Because if they can't cough, or then you even if you went way down to suction, you would not get anything in the periphery. But what you can do with that cough assist machine is you can pull it up first. And then clear it out. 
So, and, and if they do have a coughless machine, you would be using that from the very beginning when you first gave them saline. Two drops of saline, three breaths or four breaths, and it should pull it right out. One of those things is going to work. Maybe the first one, maybe the last one, but one of them is going to work. And then once they, you get it out, let them recuperate, wean them back down to room air, and then you're good.